Did you know that when you blow out a candle, you can relight it without touching the wick? That's right. Let's zoom in and see. See, it's catching fire without me touching the flame with the wick. Almost like magic. But the thing is, it's not magic. It's science. Let's find out how it works. Before we step into all the cool stuff about candles, let's take a step back and ask a simple question. What is a candle? You might be thinking, well, I already know what a candle is. But let's break it down a bit. What do you think a candle is actually made of? Any guesses? A candle is made of two main parts, the wick and the wax. The wick is usually a piece of braided cotton and wax, that's the fuel that helps the candle burn. And the most common type of wax used in the candle is called paraffin wax. And it's made of hydrocarbons which are molecules of hydrogen and carbon atoms. Paraffin wax is human made substance but it is extracted and refined from petroleum. While it's a natural component of petroleum, the process of isolating it and refining it to create paraffin wax is a human activity. And guess what? That's what actually burns in the candle flame through the wick. Now let's try something interesting. What if I try to burn the wax directly? Seems simple, right? But nothing happens. Why do you think that is? Because the solid wax doesn't burn directly. So what do we do? We light the wick. And watch closely, the flame at the base gets super hot, over 500 degrees Celsius. And that's hot enough to melt the solid wax. Now, the wick soaks up the liquid wax like a sponge. As the wax travels up, it gets hotter and turns into a gas. And here is something interesting. This gas then reacts with the oxygen in the air and releases heat and light with carbon dioxide and water. This whole process is called combustion. Remember what I showed you in the beginning? The wick catching fire even when the flame didn't touch it directly. Here is what's happening. When you blow out the candle, the gaseous wax, the vapor keeps rising from the wick for a few seconds. If you bring a flame close right away, it doesn't touch the wick. Instead, the gaseous wax is what is catching fire here. And then the flame travels down the vapor trail, relighting the wick. It's not magic, it's science. The invisible wax gas is the secret behind the relighting trick. Alright, uh, let's do a very simple experiment now. Right, I'm bringing a spoon near, a stainless steel spoon and holding it close to the top part of the flame as you're seeing here. Let's see what happens now. Can you see that uh, black? No, not visible. Yeah. Can you see that black thing there? That's the carbon deposit called the soot, the tiny black particles from the flame. Now, let me put the spoon near the central part of the flame. Okay, do you see that white mark? Not very visible. Yeah, that is unburned wax. That white mark is unburned wax. Let me try that again by keeping the spoon really, really close to the wick where the wax is getting melted and converting to gas and directly right at the stainless steel. Okay, I think now it's much more visible. Uh, yeah, that is again unburned wax collected right on the spoon. With these observations in mind, let's try to understand the structure of a flame. A flame is the visible and gaseous part of the fire where vaporized wax burns to produce heat and light. And remember, also carbon dioxide and water. Now, let's take a closer look. Let's start with the outer zone of the flame. It's blue, though it's hard to see clearly there. This is called the non-luminous zone where complete combustion of the wax happens. Why? Because there is plenty of oxygen here. This part is really exposed to the whole atmosphere where there is plenty of oxygen. Then, this is the hottest part of the flame because complete combustion is taking place here. Then comes the middle zone. This one is yellow and the brightest of the flame. It's called the luminous zone. Here, incomplete combustion happens due to limited air supply. That's where the carbon particles are from. Remember when I placed the spoon in this middle zone, we saw black soot appear on it. That black mark is sign of incomplete combustion. And this zone is moderately hot produces yellow glow and leaves behind the carbon suit that we saw. Now if you move on to the inner zone of the flame, this part looks dark or black or here you can see transparent. There is no air. It forms around the wick and contains hot unburned vapor of wax. Remember when I placed the spoon in this region, I placed a couple of times we saw unburned wax collect on it. That's because no burning was taking place there, just gaseous wax rising up. And this is also the least hot 
part of the flame. The temperature of this inner zone is about 1000 degrees Celsius and it's the coolest part of the flame compared to the other two. So yeah, that's the structure of a flame. Outer zone, blue, hottest with complete combustion. Middle zone, yellow, moderately hot with partial combustion. And inner zone is dark, least hot, no combustion at all, just wax vapor.